This is the story of a boy and his dream. But more than that, it is the story of an American boy in a dream that is truly American. The year 1928, the time spring. If you were a young man, your thoughts were undoubtedly turning to those of love. But if you were a young boy, your thoughts were of one thing, baseball. Great bunch of infielders we got. Yeah, big leaguers. What do you want? Rounders, fly, anything. Watch this. How's that for a ball player? Yeah, we ought to give him another chance. Hey, kid, you want another? Yes, sir. Here it comes. Hey, kid, come here a minute. Now, don't tell me that one didn't sting. Just a little bit. Haven't you got a glove? No, sir. Come here a minute. You mean I can borrow this? No, you can have it. For teeth? For teeth. now reads Junior Pasadena College. That way, Mom. Pasadena Junior College. Of course. How'd I get it mixed up like that? Bye, bye. Yeah, they wouldn't know who I'd be jumping for at the track meet tomorrow. Is that what your brother Mac won a medal for? Is that what you're talking about? Won a medal? <laughs> Mom, when Mac jumped for Pasadena Junior College, he broke the national junior college record. And nobody has jumped that far since. That's nice. Jumped 25 feet, six and a half inches, Bill. Broke his brother's record. Do you think maybe he could uh, jump over that Southern Cal line? He led the conference in TDs. Only there's one problem, Bill. Oh, you mean the Trojans have already got him? <laughs> no, no. No, he's a colored boy. I heard somebody squawking about giving colored boys too many athletic scholarships. Colored boys are all right with me if they're the right color. The right color? I like a good, clean American boy with a B average. That's the kind of a boy you're talking about. His colors are blue and gold. UCLA colors, huh? That's right, and you can tell it to Robinson for me. That's right. You're Mac Robinson. I ran against you when you were at Oregon. Oh, sure. You ran for Southern Cal. Pete Shubank. This is my wife. Hello, Mac. How do you do? This is Ray Ireson, Jackie's girl. Oh, hello. Nice to know you. 
What are you doing these days, kid? Oh, I got a good, steady job. Glad to hear. Come on, Dad. Teasing up? Yeah, a lot. I don't know what's the matter with those guys out there, giving it to Jack like that. Just because, because he's... he's the best half back on the field. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. And Jackie, I wasn't kidding about that either. They certainly have a lot of respect for you out there. I have a lot of respect for them, too. Believe me. How's Mac been doing lately? I always liked Mac. Mac? Oh, Mac's doing fine. on the All-American. Did I? Somebody else told me you cut class this morning. Could be. Was it because you worked late last night? And because I went to see about a better job, a full-time job. Why now? You've still got some time before you graduate. If I graduate. Oh. Suppose I finish out the year. I'm no further along than when I started. No closer to getting a half-decent job so I can afford to get married. Who are you thinking of marrying, Mr. Robinson? Oh, you know, Billy. Your mother will take it hard if you quit school now. Yes, I know. You ought to talk to her before you do anything, and to Mac. Yeah. It was Mac I was thinking of. Well, if you just wait till June and get your diploma... A lot of good a college education did Mac. Well, Mac's all right. He's got a job. Yeah. A good, steady job. Night. I fix you some lunch. Here, catch. Man, that's really smart signal calling. I thought you'd be hungry. I'm always hungry. Is it a while? Sure. Anything bothering you? I want to quit college. Right after the basketball season. What for? I got to get a job. I want to marry Ray. School's one thing, but you and Mom can't support Ray, too. You can't wait till you graduate. What good will a degree do me? They're not hiring colored football coaches. Not our color, anyway. Don't you want to play baseball this season? What good will that do me? Baseball's one sport they'll never let me in. Yeah, that's your best sport, too. I wonder if there's any place where they will let you in. There's one place nobody draws a color line. Yeah, great job for a college man. May not be a great job, but it's steady. I hear about you quitting. Yeah, right after the basketball season. We'll miss you, fella. You got a job lined up? No, not yet. What about those letters we sent to the high schools? Any answers? Three. What'd they say? Well, first school didn't want me for a coach. The second school didn't want me for a coach. And <laughs> the third school, they just didn't want me. Any mail for me? Five more letters. Business must be good. Let's open them. Pickwick College doesn't want any coaches. Bainbridge either. Hard News says sorry. Western State, no soap. Uh-uh. You got a job, brother. I have? What does it say? 
Listen to this. From the President of the United States. Greetings. He sure writes interesting letters. Oh, yes. Listen to this, Mildred. The other day, my commanding officer called me in and told me the good news. So I'm some kind of athletic director at that, even if it's for the Army. Sounds like he's happy. And he looks good, too. In his new picture. And a lieutenant now. That's a mighty fine job. Wait till later on. Dinner's almost ready. It'll only take a minute, Mom. <laughs> That's just like you. The first thing on top is your glove. What are you gonna do with it? I don't know. Don't know if I'll ever do anything with it again. Uh, more mail again. I bet you spent 50 bucks on stamps. If it gets me a job, it'll be worth it. I don't hope Polly doesn't want any coaches. I could have guessed that. Hey. Wait a minute. What is it? A job. Not the president greeting me again. No, but you read it. Robinson, you're up next. Pick up the one you like and give it a ride. Yes, sir. Now batting for the Black Panthers, Jackie Robinson, shortstop. Oh. 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 This is a new boy, Samson. Take it real easy with him. Nice and easy. Let him hit it. Yeah, I'll do that little thing. This is right up for you. Easy, man. Throw it easy. Right. What? Let me help you out, Mr. Robinson. Goodness, I don't know what's wrong with that pitcher today. You hadn't ought to do that, Samson. You make this boy mad. Nice and easy, I said. He's incorrigible, that's what he is. Incorrigible. Right here now, man. Good. And alive, you sure swing pretty. That new boy. I thought we were gonna be friends. about shortening bread? Never mind about shortening bread. How about some ham and eggs, Skipper? Yeah, that's a pretty good idea. How about something to eat? Ooh, okay, yeah. okay, we'll stop at the next drive-in. Is it always like this, sleeping on the bus? Most of the time. We sleep, and we eat, and we play ball. Then we get on our bus and do it all over again. You got a cigarette? I don't smoke. That Ernie, always begging cigarettes. I can't afford to buy them. Why not? Don't you get paid like the rest of us? Yeah, I get paid a little. I've got a wife in Birmingham and I have to send her every buck. Got a new baby coming in a couple of weeks, too. Sure wish I could be there. Well, why don't you take a week off and go? Can't. Haven't got the money. After what I sent home, I just managed to make it to payday. You're breaking my heart. Here. Thanks, boy. All right. Get back. Get back. Get back. Get back. Get back. Who's going in? New boy's turn. Rules and regulations. New boy always goes first. I guess that means you, Jackie. Well, what will I have to do? Three things. C, 
see if we can eat inside. Two, see if we can wash up. Three, if we can't eat inside, see if they'll fix up sandwiches. Yeah, what is it? Sixteen of us outside in a bus. How's chances of getting something to eat? Well, uh, I'm all alone here. Fred, I couldn't help you. How about some sandwiches? Could we have sandwiches? Well, I, uh... How many of them did you say? Sixteen. Well, I can make you sixteen beef sandwiches and maybe the same in ham and egg. That doing it? Swell. How about some fried potatoes on the side, Chef? Yep. Take about 20 minutes. Thanks. Do you suppose we could wash you up a bit? Sorry, it's out of order. contract with the team. Contract? You want to know about contracts with this team? Yes. Say, hey, fellas, this man wants to know about contracts. A contract? Fix you right up with the information. Yes, sir. Contract. Tell him about that, boy. You want a contract with the Panthers? The first thing you got to do, borrow some money from the boss. Then you know you got a job until it gets paid back. If you can get in the lane, you'll get it. Yeah, and you got to keep your eye on the grandstand. When you got a good day and a good crowd, it's a good time to hit him up. You owe him a week's salary. That means you got a one-week contract. When you want for two, that means you got a two-week contract, sir. Possibly. Okay, you guys. Let's get up and get out of here and get a little work. Come on. Understand this, Robinson. Don't you have a good mind, or are you playing coy? I waited for you till I missed the train. What's the idea? You don't mean you're really with the Dodgers? Jackie? Well, uh, I don't know. What do you mean, you don't know? 
traveling around all the time and not riding as often as I should, I think I still have a girl. Good. You'll need one. You know why we brought you here? No, sir. Not exactly. But I heard you were starting a colored ball team. Is that it? No. You were brought here to play with the Brooklyn organization. Montreal, to start with. Me? Play for Montreal? I want to win pennants, and we need ball players. The war set us back a little. So three years ago, the Brooklyn Dodger management decided to scout untapped sources of supply. Mexico, Cuba, all the Latin American countries, and our own country, too. That right, Clyde? From coast to coast. Yes, for players who can help us win. Many of the men we saw were good. Some had great promise, like you. You think you can do it, Jackie? Make good and organized baseball? If I got the chance. There's more here than just playing. I wish it just meant runs and hits and errors, the things you can see in a box score. <laughs> a box score. You know, a box score is really democratic, Jackie. It doesn't say how big you are or how your father voted in the last election or what church you attend. It just tells you what kind of a ball player you were that day. Well, isn't that what counts? It's all that ought to count, and maybe someday it's all that will count. That's why we brought you here. I want to see if we can make a start in that direction. It'll take a lot of courage. Yeah, it sure will. It might take more courage for the organization than for you, Jackie. Have you thought of that? I haven't thought of anything. It's all so sudden. Kind of hits me straight between the eyes. Just relax, boy. There's plenty of time. Pull up a chair and make yourself comfortable. Thanks. We're tackling something big here, Jackie. If we fail, no one will try again for 20 years. But if we succeed... If we succeed, Brooklyn will win a pennant. Yes, that too. But we're dealing with rights here. The right of any American to play baseball, the American game. You think he's our boy, Glenn? Well, he can run, he can hit, and he can field. But can he take it? That I don't know. What do you think, Jackie? Well, I can try. Think you've got guts enough to play the game no matter what happens? They'll shout insults at you, they'll come into your spikes first, they'll throw at your head. They've been throwing at my head for a long time, Mr. Ricky. Hold on a player in the heat of an important game. Suppose I collide with you at second base, and when I get up, I say, you, you dirty black so-and-so. What do you do? Mr. Ricky, do you want a ball player who's afraid to fight back? I want a ball player with guts enough not to fight back. You've got to do this job with base hits, stolen bases, and fielding ground balls, Jackie. Nothing else. Now I'm playing against you in a World Series, and I'm hot-headed. I want to win this game. So I go into you spikes first. You jab the ball in my ribs, and the umpire says, I'll fight Flair. All I can see is your black face, that black face right over me. So I haul off and punch you right in the cheek. What do you do? Mr. Ricky, I've got two cheeks. Good. You want a contract with the Black Panthers? No, sir, we don't have contracts. Hey, any agreement, verbal or written, about how long you'll play with them? No, sir, none at all. All right. Clyde will give you a contract before you leave. Don't sign it right away. This is a very important move. Think it over carefully. Is your uh, mother living? Yes, sir. She's in California. Call her up. Ask her advice. We'll pay the phone bill. Yes, sir. And Jackie, remember one thing. No matter what happens on the ball field, you can't fight back. That's going to be the hard part. You can't fight back. Ellen, get Jackie Robinson's home in Pasadena, California. It's Sycamore 7, 6459. Hello? Who? From New York? Y yes, put him on, please. It's Jackie, I'll call him from New York. Why is he calling? Is something wrong with him? Just a minute, Mark. Hello? Yes. Jackie? How are you, kid? Are you okay? He's okay, Mom. 
You want to talk to Mom? Oh, sure, she's right here. She wants to talk to you, Mom. Hello, Jackie. You all right? You got a chance for what? Oh, I can be the first Negro to ever play an organized baseball, Mom, if I'm good enough, if I can make the grade. Only I'll be taking a big chance. Mac, they want Jackie to play baseball for, for Brooklyn. They do? Yeah. Well, Jackie, I don't know what kind of advice to give you, only... Only there must be churches in a big town like New York. Why don't you go find yourself a church and talk to the minister and see what he has to say? And Jackie... Any time you have a real problem, listen to God a while. Here, talk to your brother Mac. He knows more about baseball than I do. Come in. Are you Reverend Carter? That's right, son. My name's Robinson, Jackie Robinson. Glad to know you, Mr. Robinson. I need some advice, important advice. I suppose we sit down and talk this thing over. You are new to this part of the city, Mr. Robinson? I'm from California. I came to New York yesterday to see Branch Rickey. Rickey? Do you mean, uh, Mr. Rickey, the baseball man? Yes. I'm a ball player, Reverend. I've just learned that the Brooklyn Dodgers have been scouting Negro ball players for a couple of years. And Mr. Rickey thinks I'm good enough to... Well, Reverend, it just means that a colored man will be able to play on the same field with a white man for the first time. Uh, who goes out to these ballparks, Jackie? Just white men? No. Anybody can buy a ticket, Reverend, colored or white. Uh, tell me, Jackie. What do you think would actually happen if you were to get out on a white baseball field? I don't know. They might call me names. They might even beat me up. I, I don't mean what would happen to you, Jack. I mean, what would happen to the colored people? Might start fights. Might even start a riot. That's true. On the other hand, every step forward for our people has started a fight somewhere. For the time being, anyhow. This is a big thing you have to decide, Jackie. And not just for you alone. It's a big thing for the whole colored people. I know. That's why I came to you for help. A great deal depends upon you, Jackie. What kind of a man you are. I suppose upon what kind of a ball player you are, too. Well, I don't know what kind of a man I am, Reverend, but uh, I think I'm a pretty good ball player. That might help. Yes, it might help a great deal. I should have written oftener, but you know how it is. You keep waiting for good news, something worth writing about. And then when this big chance came, I didn't want to tell you about it. I wanted to be sure I had the contract signed and everything. You know, sometimes when you wait for real good news, you wait forever. I guess so. I don't want to wait forever. Look, let's sit a minute. Let's talk it over. It's going to be real tough for a while. A lot of people don't want a Negro in baseball. I know. As soon as I make it stick, I'll come for you. We'll get married. No. I've asked you to make good, Jack. Now, before you stop. I can't let you do that, Ray. I've got to go south for spring training. I'll have to face that. It might not be easy. It'll be easier if we face it together. It won't be any picnic. You marry me now, and you're asking for trouble. All right, Jackie. I'll ask you. Jackie, 
Daytona Beach, next stop. Are you Jackie Robinson? Yes, I am, and this is my wife. Glad to know you. My name's Gaines. I'm an attorney here. Mr. Ricky asked me if I could help arrange accommodations for you. He did? Sent a man down about a month ago to look up a place for you to stay. I won. Well, that's very nice of you, Mr. Gaines. Oh, not at all. We're proud to have you. Your bags will be in the check room. My car's right out front. Good question. Do you think there's going to be any trouble? He means trouble with the other players. Trouble? The only trouble I'm worried about, ground ball to my right. You think you're good enough to make the Dodgers? Don't know if I can make Montreal. Better concentrate on that first. What are you going to do if a pitcher throws a dust at your head? Uh, same as you'd do. Duck. What are you sports writers doing up at this hour of the morning? Walking in your sleep? We thought we'd take a look at your new ball player, Clay. Take a look at him playing ball, not flapping his mouth with you guys. All right, Robinson, get out there. Throw if you loosen up your arm. Yes, Mr. Hopper. Mr. Hopper, do you think baseball will accept the colored second baseman? First, let's see if I will. Take the first one, Mr. Hopper, or shall I hit away? Use your own judgment, Shorty. How's that high elbow coming? Do you keep you from hitting under the ball? Don't seem to work out like it should, Mr. Hopper. Of course, I don't pop to the infield anymore. I just fly into center field. Shorty's got a problem. He's built too close to the ground. But I got a new idea, Mr. Hopper. When I take the bat back, I'm going to hold it up like this. And that way, I ought to get come through a half inch higher. That's me. I ought to hit right on the line now. You watch.
like that, too. Gentlemen, believe me, it should be the best welterweight battle in the past 10 years. And sports fans, all is not so quiet on the baseball front as officials would have us believe. While there are no known organized movements against Montreal's Jackie Robinson, it is the fact that some cities are expressing pretty strong sentiments. So strong, in fact, that I hear the International League President Shaughnessy will make a significant visit to the Brooklyn Dodger office in the immediate future. Perhaps tomorrow. And now to answer some mail as time allows. Branch, I've got to talk to you. Well, go ahead and talk. Branch, the season opens in Jersey City tomorrow. Oh, I'm glad you told me. And this is your last chance to avoid a big mistake. Now, suppose you let me decide that. You'll break up the whole International League playing that colored boy. I've had letters, phone calls. I've even polled all the sports writers. What do the sports writers have to say? Jim Flanagan thinks you're even hurting the Negroes. This will stir up a lot of trouble. There'll be black and white fights about it all over the country, and you'll be sorry you ever started it. 
Frank, I've spent my whole life in baseball, and I've always been proud of that because I've always thought baseball was a fine game, a clean game. I've always thought it had a good influence on the American people, on the kids growing up. I've always thought baseball taught fair play and sportsmanship. But if what you say is true, then I've been all wrong. My whole life's been wrong, wasted. Tell you what I'll do with you. I'll go out to Jersey City with you tomorrow, and we'll sit in the front box. And if anybody's got any rocks to throw, they can throw them at me. Are you nervous? A little, maybe. But I won't be when we get on the field. Another hour and it'll begin. Would you rather I didn't go? No, you might as well come to the game. I'm going to fall on my face. It might as well be in front of you, too. You won't fall down, darling. I won't. A triangle will do it. You think I can run? Wait till you see me run this afternoon. I can't break in with just a scratch hit and a fielder's choice. I've got to set them on their ear. I've got to be the best ball player they've ever seen anywhere. That's the spirit. Anyone else? And that's a fact, ladies and gentlemen. 25,000 people are here to see baseball history made today at Roosevelt Stadium in Jersey City for this, the opening of the 1946 International League season. Even though the ball game has started, excited fans are still crowding into this huge concrete horseshoe. It's a holiday throng, eager and expectant, but with one thing in mind. What will the highly publicized Jackie Robinson do today? Will organized baseball's first Negro player make good, or will he fail? You fans out there, what do you think? said to err is human and Jackie Robinson proved himself indeed a mortal man in the first inning by booting that easy play permitting Jersey City's first run but the game is young fans and so is Jackie everyone's been waiting for. This big crowd is silent and tense as Jackie stands there at the plate. He's a right-handed batter, you know. Stands well back in the box, feet wide apart. Very good form. And every eye in this stadium is on that boy. Anxious. As Jackie stands there waiting for that first pitch.
Jack, be right here. It's a historic day, but a sad one for Jersey. There's two out in the ninth, and the score is 14 to 1, with a single Jersey City put out left. There it goes. It's a hard pound to Robinson's left. It'll be close, but he stabs it. Jackie goes to first for the out, and the ball game is over. What a memorable day, especially for Jackie Robinson, and for the president of the Brooklyn Dodgers, Branch Rickey. That's the greatest first day any ball player ever had. Man, oh man. Four hits, including a homer, two stolen bases, and scored twice on ball. Yes, he played a great game. But, oh, that's the trouble with you, Frank. There you go, butting again. No, but you know where Montreal is playing next week, French. And they don't like colored people there. Here, look at this. Sports editor, the morning paper sent it to me. Twenty-five. Hey, Clark, give me a beer. Yeah, me too. How many all together? Make it three. I see you got a shine plan here this afternoon. Not me, brother. I ain't got him. You got him. I got him? Uh, I don't even live here. Where you from? Out in Brooklyn. I drive a truck down here once a week. Huh? Well, when you get back home, tell Ricky that you spoke with a couple of friends of his nigger ball player. Yeah. Friends. Don't tell me about it. I just don't like shine. Yeah. Have anything to you? No. Oh, I thought you was one of the boys. One of what boys? Shut up, Spike. Ah, uh, what's it, Diff? Uh, we got a little club, kind of. Branches all over the country. Yeah, when, when they get up at E, we, we kind of put them in that place. Oh, yeah. Look what's coming. Uh, this scene is taken. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, maybe you'd like to come with us after the game. Shut up, Spike. Where are you going after the ball game? The Lodge decided to send a delegation. That's us. You hadn't ought to tell anybody. Oh, this guy's all right. We're going to call on Robinson as soon as the game is over. We don't like them boys playing ball around here. Not in this town. Robinson? Get out there, Robbie.
Where you going, black boy? Go on away, black boy. We're the welcoming committee. You'd better get out of here. No, Jackie. Go on. It just makes it tough for having you here. We want to have a talk with you. We don't want you in this town, see? No matter what happens on the ball field, you can't fight back. That's going to be the hard part. You can't fight back. You better not play tomorrow, get me? Get me? Having any trouble, Jackie? No, no trouble. We'll just walk to the bus with you. Out of my way, you. Nice game today, Jackie. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Shorty. Yes, Mr. Hopper. A little present for you. Present? Yeah, here. Just what you need. Gee, Mr. Hopper, that's awful nice of you. New pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. Elevator shoe. And an inch to you. Keep you from hitting under the ball. Say, that's wonderful. That's a great idea. Thanks a lot, Mr. Hopper. Sure hope they'll work. Watch that, Shorty. Remember, you're an inch taller now. Forgot all about it. Banner up! That's me. Out of there before you get rode out. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a brother of yours, Jackie. Why don't you take him along? He wants to get into baseball, too. <laughs> <laughs> stays in Montreal. Mm, for the time being. Brooklyn and Montreal will train together in Panama. We'll have plenty of chance to see everybody. Well, you do what you think best, Branch. But I'll tell you this. We've had record attendance all over our league this year. And if there's any possible way of leaving Robinson and Montreal another season... Well, I think maybe we might. Boy like that ought to play every day. And we've got Burwell at second base. That's fine, Branch. That's wonderful. All our fans want him. But I think they're making too much out of an ordinary ball player. Don't you think, Clay? He led the league in hitting. Oh, minorly. 
And we won the Little World Series, too. Oh, I'm not complaining, Clay. It's just that I don't want to burden a fair ball player with the responsibilities of a Superman. Of course, Jackie might hit big league pitching. But suppose he did come up. How do we know that he could... Well, that he wouldn't get out of hand. How do we know? Mr. Ricky. Mr. Ricky, you don't have to worry none about that boy. He is the greatest competitor I ever saw. And what's more, he's a gentleman. Oh. Glad to hear it. We got Burwell on second, remember? Burwell or no Burwell? Besides, it caused trouble. Trouble? Yeah. There's that petition, you know. Petition? What petition? Well, some of the boys... Half a dozen of your Brooklyn players have signed a petition. They don't want Robinson on your ball club. They don't, huh? Get hold of the men that signed that petition and bring them to my room at 8 o'clock tonight. you understand? Yes, sir. And you call yourselves Americans? Who's your leader? Who started this? Tony, you signed that petition. You want to deny Robinson the right to play baseball? I just don't want to be on the same team with him. Were you born in the United States? Yes, sir. And your parents, where were they born? My father was born in Italy. And your mother? She was born in Italy, too. They came to America before you were born? Yeah. And your father, what did he work at when he first came to this country? On the railroad, he was a laborer. Your mother, did she work, too? She, uh, she worked in a shirt factory. Your father was an immigrant laborer. Did anybody get up a petition to keep him from working on the railroad? Not that I know of. Did anybody try to stop your mother from working in the shirt factory? Your parents came to this country from Italy and were allowed to work as free people. And yet you, a child and beneficiary of that freedom, want to deny the same opportunity to an American whose parents and grandparents and great-grandparents have been in this country for 200 years. Is that right? How about you, Dolby? Would you have the courage to strip to the waist and tell Robinson that to his face, here behind closed doors? Tell him to his face that he can't play on the same ball team with you. Tell him you're not going to let him earn his living as a ball player. Answer me, sir. Mr. Ricky, I wasn't thinking. I didn't think. And that, sir, explains why your teammates call you Ironhead. Yes, sir. Garvin, you've been in baseball a long time. Do you want to play on the Dodgers with Robinson? No, sir, I don't. Will you play with Robinson? I'd rather not, sir. Would you like to have your contract transferred to another club? Yes, sir, I would. I may accommodate you, sir. All right, men. I respect your right to petition. But I do question and I will fight any petition that denies any American the right to earn his living in a game that is supposed to represent the democratic principles of sportsmanship and fair play. Do you understand me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's all for tonight. Your suits are in your lockers. There's a ball game tomorrow. I hope I'll see you there, in uniform. Jackie. Yes, sir? Jackie Montreal is starting a 12-game series with the Dodgers. Yes, sir. Take this. During that series, I want you to play first base for Montreal. First base? 
Mr. Ricky, I've never played first base. We're protected at second base, Jackie. We've got Burwell. Brooklyn can use a good first baseman. Oh, I see. Go out there and show them. Run their legs off. Yes, sir. I sure will. You wanted to keep Robinson off the Brooklyn team, didn't you? Yes, sir. Then why you keep feeding him those big fat ones? Fat ones? I ain't feeding him no fat ones. No, then how'd he get three hits off you? Just lucky. All right, Carpen. He's up first in this inning. If you still want to keep him off the Brooklyn team, I'll tell you how you can do it. Strike him out. Okay. Watch me. from Ebbets Field. They call it Big League Baseball, folks, because you've got to be bigger and better to stay up here. That's the problem confronting Jackie Robinson at this very minute as he goes to bat for the first time in a big league game. Oh, yes, I know he's done all right in training. I've seen the papers, too. But that was only practice. From now on, it's for keeps. There's a little man upstairs in the press box who's known, among other things, as the official scorer. He watches like a hawk. He marks down everything. He'll make a mark for every move that Jackie Robinson makes, good or bad. And not only the official scorer's eyes are on the Negro rookie, the whole world is waiting. Everybody wants to know if Branch Rickey has made a mistake. Will they be able to say, I told you so? Let's see. tightness in a few days. It's just nerves, that's all. Well, I just can't get on a shifting my feet. I missed the bag completely today in the third inning. They'd only let you play second base where you belong. We've got Burrell at second base. First is where they need me. But if you can't get on to it, honey, and it worries you. It's got me worried, all right. It's got me where I'm not hitting either. Anyhow, you're still the best base runner. They can't take that away from you. 
Yeah, but you can't steal first. Ow! What have you got in those hands? Steel springs? They're nurses' hands, remember? Well, they better nurse me out of this slump, or Mr. Ricky will be looking for a new boy. No, Jackie, don't wait till you feel the bag under your foot. Do it all in one motion. Oh, I just can't seem to get the hang of it. Try another one. That's worth it. Here, let me show you how. You almost had it last time. When you missed the bag, you kicked back for it like this. Here, you try it. That's the idea. All you have to do is practice now. Why do you want to do that? If I can't make the grade at first base, he'd have his old job back. He's a team player, Jackie. Uh, and the weatherman apologizes for the recent rain. Well, let's get serious, folks. They can't say that Branch Rickey hasn't given Jackie Robinson a king-sized opportunity in staying in big league baseball. On that last road trip, when the California boy wasn't hitting too well, some of the out-of-town sports writers said that Jackie should have been out of there. He had a little trouble with first base, playing it and reaching it. He just couldn't come up with that extra base hit. Right now, I see Jackie stepping into the box. All right, bring it in out there. Come in. Here we go. folks it may be that the rookie Jackie Robinson is a big league ball player after all but he had us all worried didn't he going to the plate 19 straight times without a hit but the pendulum can swing both ways and it may be that Jackie has started on a hitting streak now in baseball it's not a who or what you are but can you play the game well, Jackie Robinson sure is playing He's hitting again. Yeah, we might win the Senate now.
Dodgers really are pouring it on now. They're up at bat with one run behind in the ninth inning, and Brooklyn Hearts today have skipped more beats than an absent-minded policeman. Well, this boy has set fire to the league since midseason when he hit safely in 21 straight games, missing the league record by one. He's laid down 42 successful bunts, a prodigious number. He's a cinch to be voted the Rookie of the Year, incidentally. Now we've got a runner on second, the, the tying run, and Jackie Robinson is at the plate. He can't butt now. He's got to hit straight away. They're two out. Harvey, come on. Hurry up with it. Harvey. Oh, watch his glove, huh? One oh, on one. Oh, God. Get up there and hit the ball. Come on, Jackie boy. invitation to Washington. Do you really think I should go? Yes, Jackie, I do. To Washington. To the Senate, to the House of Representatives, to the American people. You learn the right to speak. They want you to speak. About things on your mind. About a threat to peace that's on everybody's mind, Jackie. Now you can fight back. I know that life in these United States can be mighty tough for people who are a little different from the majority. I'm not fooled because I've had a chance open to very few Negro Americans, but I do know that democracy works for those who are willing to fight for it, and I'm sure it's worth defending. I can't speak for any 50 million people. No one person can. But I'm certain that I and other Americans of many races and faiths have too much invested in our country's welfare to throw it away or to let it be taken from us. Yes, this is the Jackie Robinson story. But it is not his story alone, not his victory alone. It is one that each of us shares. A story, a victory that can only happen in a country that is truly free. A country where every child has the opportunity to become president play baseball for the Brooklyn Dodgers.